Keeping up with the COVID news, New Jersey is beginning Murphy's long-promised review of how the state handled COVID. So Governor Murphy's administration has launched a long-awaited review of how New Jersey responded to the COVID-19 pandemic, two years and eight months after Murphy's first promised one in the early days of the crisis. Murphy announced yesterday that the state tapped a pair of outside firms to conduct the independent review. The work will begin immediately, but a final report isn't expected until 2023. Teams from Philadelphia law firm Montgomery, McCracken, Walker, and Rhodes, led by Republican former Assistant State Attorney General and Boston Consulting Group, a Massachusetts management confirm a Massachusetts. I'm so tongue tied this morning, you guys. A Massachusetts, a Massachusetts, Massachusetts. You're welcome. I can, I can do it. I just Massachusetts. I did it. Go champ. A Massachusetts. I <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> A Massachusetts <laughs> management consulting firm will oversee, oversee the project. I can see you reaching for the sound effects and I'm not done. The move fulfills a vow Murphy has made multiple times since April 2020, just weeks after COVID-19 began spreading in New Jersey, to conduct a postpartum on how the state handled the pandemic. The Democratic governor said last month that starting the review has taken longer than expected, as Republicans repeatedly criticized him for the delay. Honestly, I'll be I'm going to be real. I really appreciated and liked how Murphy handled COVID because he held it. He just handled it so well, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah. Shut up. Uh, who, put, who put you behind the board? You did. You actually. surprised that you. Was actually you. you. Yeah. And oh. I didn't think you'd say yes. Good job. You made it through. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Massachusetts. Yeah, there you go, champ. I'm yeah, so I did it. That's right. That's right. But anyway, I agree with you. Yeah, I just I feel like he handled it the best way anybody really could, unlike China. No tea, no shade, but a little bit of tea and a little bit of shade. Uh I don't know because I felt genuinely not safe. I felt as easy as I could while he was doing his conferences. So I, I honestly gotta give it to him. And I still think he should run for president, but that doesn't mean he'll win. But that's just me. <laughs> I think all around Murphy has been great across the board. Like if this thing doesn't come back, I would love Murphy to run for president. Me too. I, I think I if if this report doesn't come come back with A pluses across every single category, I'm gonna be upset. I know New New Jersey really did it right. Yeah, you know New Jersey. We did model a lot of our behavior off of New York, but we still would change things in it, and it's even fair, harder to do that with here because we are more densely populated. To be fair, in New York, we don't have Cuomo. We have Murphy. So oh. We yeah. handled that means we handled it better. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that was some scandal right there. But no, my God, no. I remember watching his conferences like every day, every morning, just sitting there, watching the numbers, seeing what's going on. Truth. And uh, he was, I think he was one of the first people to really initiate the vaccine. I think he was. He seems like a smart politician, which is sad to say. There's not many of no them. politician is a smart politician. I said what I said. Anyways, <laughs> there's yeah. I know also with this story, you know, people were upset that he didn't launch his the review immediately when he but said what's there like, to a year ago. Immediately, exactly. That's my whole thing though. Is like he, th I feel like he did it at actually a pretty quick time because most of the time when something happens in politics or the economy or whatever, you know, you're not gonna know how it really affects everybody mm -hmm. until years later. So the fact that he got it out two years and what, eight months yes. later is actually pretty impressive, yeah. I would say. We were talking about this a few nights ago about how we don't see the effects of the economy until, you know, after a president's term. And right now, we've I kind of realized, well, and you told me, that we are really living in Trump's economy because yes. it takes so long to catch up. And it makes sense because I know people give, not to bring up Trump, but, but here we are, but while well, when Obama ended his term, it was Obama's economy when Trump was president. And everyone's like, oh, my God, the economy is so great. X, Y, Z. That wasn't Trump. That was Obama. And here we are here. Here, a lot of specifically Republicans are claiming that the economy is bad because of Biden. But no, we are simply feeling the aftermaths of covid. And, you know, the whole world is. Yeah, I know. It's like it's that's and the whole then, thing. Except that, China because they have zero COVID. Oh yeah, yeah, that's because you know everybody's in quarantine and lockdown. Um, but that's the thing is that like m other than China, the whole world is. That's very true. You know, and and we're all kind of de dealing with the repercussions of it. 
and that's what a lot of people tend to forget but like it's not biden it's literally just the world i know but all people want to do is just like point fingers that's well that's what it that's what makes it easiest is when you point fingers you have someone to blame let's just say it's all of our fault and and speaking of economy i i really like that murphy yeah i don't know if any of you know this but he comes from a economy background he's not a career politician per good he, for him. i he don't know own. exactly what he did but i think he was like cfo of some very large management firm consulting thing <laughs> consulting <laughs> thing i'm it's, convinced i don't remember <laughs> yeah i don't remember the exact details i haven't done this in a while but he isn't a politician as much as others he understands more of a economic perspective yeah that's cool it Sorry, is- I'm 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 writing things. That's okay. You can keep on writing things while we go to break, Gabby. Sound good? We Metallica announces a huge tour and a new album. Crazy. Whoa. So Metallica's back, a new album and a tour coming in 2023. And yesterday they released a new song. This song is produced by Greta Feldman, James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich. And you know, the album called 20, 72 Seasons arrives April 14th of next year. Their tour dates kick off in Europe the same month before a string of North America shows later. What's so funny? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> are, you, are you laughing at me? No, I'm not laughing at okay. you. Sorry. I'm laughing at Kenny. Sorry. Just continue. Please continue. Extra stints are scheduled for Europe and America in 2024. The show, the tour includes two shows in each city visited, and the band promises a completely different set list and support lineups in each. They will continue. They, wow, words. They will be coming. Yeah. To, yeah, they will be coming to MetLife Stadium on August fourth and sixth. On the fourth, they will be joined by opening guest Pan, Pantera. I almost said Pantera. Panera. Yes, Panera. 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 <laughs> and Mammoth W V H. And that's Wolfgang Van Halen. Thank you. Is it really? Yeah, the son of Eddie Van Halen. Oh, very cool. So you just saw a picture of it for the first time the other night. Yeah, Eddie Van Halen's kind of hot. But then on the 6th, they'll be joined by Five Finger Death Punch and Ice Nine Kills. And Emil said, <laughs> Emil added to the story. Oh, I already okay. have it ready. No, no, no. Okay, should I just leave it a surprise? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, mean, I was saying this off air and WMSC trip to the Metallica concert. That'd be no. very fun. I'd have a good time. As long as I get to go to the Metallica concert, I'm very happy. I would just like to just like rock out. I, I just want to vibe. Like everybody on Zoom just saw what I did, but because we're radio, anybody who's just listening couldn't tell. I was like moving and grooving. I have always wanted to go to a Metallica show. Ever since I heard that my dad, many years ago, he broke his rib at a Metallica mosh pit. Ooh. So I'm like, that's got to be fun. Uh, I, gotta do it. I, don't, I don't intend on breaking my rib. I would love to. But... It'd be a great story for the book. Well, but I mean, Full Wait, send, Kenneth. I would need to break my skull to beat his story. You okay. could break your neck or something. Well, no. then I would die. Not always. <laughs> we took a turn. Okay, so I don't know how many people in here listen, really listen to Metallica. I know I know a song or two. Okay, I know I know Kenneth has done a I deep dive Kenny on did. them. Okay, so what is your what are the songs that you want them to play live? Okay, um, it, it's the basic pick. Um, of it my is. favorite song is Master of Puppets. Basic. Oh my god, are you an Eddie Munson fan? Are you basic? I actually, you're so basic. I actually wasn't a fan of Eddie Munson at first. Yeah, I know. That was a little weird. Disrespectful is what at I when first, the, the normies when the normies took all responsibility and being of Eddie Munson. But other than Master, of, other than Master of Puppets. I would have to say probably nothing else matters. Okay. That's off the black album. Okay. Yeah, get it, Gabby. That, that song is beautiful. It's Queen, not a right? typical <laughs> it's not a typical Metallica song. It's very ballad like. Is it quirky? Is it not like the other songs? Elton John called it one of the best songs ever written. Her. Yeah. All by James. Elton John Hedford. knows. Elton John. If Elton John says something, actually made James Hetfield cry. Mm-hmm. We'd That's sing so crazy. Honestly, I think mine would also be off the Black Album. I think mine would be Through the Never. I feel like that would go really okay. hard. I feel like, oh. As long as they don't play anything off St. Anger, I will be over. Gabby's <laughs> mic keeps bullying her today. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I don't know what else, though. I have to look through my songs. Um, hey, guys, I've done my job for the day. You have, yeah, I did. Would you like me because, to ramble about Metallica? Because <laughs> WMSC Radio just posted a post. 
And Crazy. I'm gonna post stories later too. Wow. So stay tuned. If you feel free to please check out our socials if you want. I don't care. It's up to They're you. They're dope. They are pretty cool. Promise. Whoa. Whoa. A graphic that you've probably seen before. So crazy. No. Anyways, um, I don't have permission to see this design, so it's not getting posted until I kind of Metallica. Anyways, continuing. On. So Metallica. I did an entire deep dive on Metallica where I listened to every album, every single, every song I could find. And what I came to realize is that they are for a reason at the forefront of the metal scene. And there's something that will never go away. It's astounding to me that a group 40 years later not only are they making new albums that's um, achievement of itself but also doing tours people at that age and they're not very old or anything are you but calling them old i said they're not very old <laughs> you said people of that age and then i said they're not very old that's assuming i don't know but they've been doing this sounded like 40, an old comment to they've me. been doing this for 40 years now and being able to do this for 40 years and not stop and be able to keep on going is very impressive especially when the quality is able to stay live performance wise there are studio albums they've in my opinion gone worse as the years have gone by the last one was a bit better though i don't know i hope they don't flop kirk hammett has really great hair yeah he does also kyle has said I'm sorry in i was our, like looking up members and what what chat did you say that in in our morning buzz chat he said at kenny i want fate to black and the unforgiven those are very, very good Look picks, at Kyle. His hair. Very, That's very stunning. good. Man. Kyle will be on tomorrow. Kyle will be on tomorrow to continue our celebration of alumni week. Woo! Woo -wee. James Hetfield's kind of good looking. Sorry. Just don't look at Lars. Oh, let's Is look at Lars. Looking? Don't look at Lars. Let's look at Lars. First, I'll lead with he's five foot I, six. I, I, what happened? Deal. What what happened? He's five foot six. Or, first what's off. wrong with that? For, he's a short king. Support the short kings. Okay. Stop hating on the short kings. Just because you're short doesn't mean you're not cute. Okay. I stand by that statement. Taller um, than me. But me he is not cute. So <laughs> I, I it's, it's unfortunate for him. Anyways, um, well, James Hetfield, cutie. A lot of people get on yeah, Lars for not being a great drummer, but he's kind of like Ringo in the fact that he's the perfect drummer for that band. Ringo um, Starr? Yes. Of course you Nerd. know Beatles reference. Of course. Nerd. Wait, Netflix. It's a season two? I thought this was the first season. Well, you have to, you have to listen to find out. Listen. Kenneth. Listen, Linda. Shout out, Linda. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Netflix has found a new hit in the form of Tim Burton's Wednesday, the Adams Family series focused on its dark daughter, played by Jenna Ortega. The show is currently planned planted at number one on Netflix. And no, unlike many recent Netflix series, is not meant to be a one-off limited series and to have more seasons have been planned. But planned does not mean equal to get made. And Wednesday season two has not been renewed by Netflix as of yet. You better get on that. How I agree. However. It would seem that Wednesday would have a better chance than most for second season, giving its relatively high critic and audience scores and its performance on Netflix's viewing hour charts. It may not be the lowest budgeted series ever, but it's not sprawling sci-fi or a fantasy epic either. It's an over or honestly, abundance. Thank abundance of mostly CGI. But you know what? I don't even care because we watched it yesterday. Actually, no, we good? finished it yesterday. Lara, okay, so I watched wait, the beginning. Wait, 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 you started it in the first place? No, she didn't. So here's what happened. Lara came home last night at like, I don't know, 8 o'clock or so. Mm -hmm. And I was watching it because I've been watching it for the past couple days. And I was on like episode four, five-ish by the time she got home. How many episodes are there? Eight. And they're like hour long episodes. Okay. And I, cool. so I was at like that episode and she sat down and she just watched the rest of the show with me. We finished the show last night. So she watched like the last like two, three episodes and had no clue what was going on beforehand. I had an idea. She's about what was very right good. She's good at filling in the lines of TV shows. And it's freaking. I know. And then, but there was like a it? whole big part, but there was like a whole big part. And she's like, wait, how does this make sense? And I was like, you literally didn't watch the first half of the show. Of course it doesn't make sense to you. Where I'm over there like, oh my God. And, he, and she's like, and she's like, why does this make sense? I don't know if you've ever started no, a show with her and gone forward with it, but it's freaky. She can predict it. It's we weird. do that sometimes. We do it with, we do it with holiday movies. We do it with really cheap Well, holiday, holiday movies are easy. I know, but we do it. We do it like it's so fun. the other day. With that, what was that one we watched? It was on oh, Hulu. It was, um, I'm gonna go. We, you, we have to find it. Uh, it was the something, and she was between two guys, but she wasn't actually between two guys. She liked the one guy, but didn't know how to turn the other guy down because she made a wrong Christmas because wish. The other guy was obsessed with her, yeah, because she made a wrong Christmas wish. So, she made a Christmas wish on a falling star, and the falling star made the wish on the wrong neighbor. Anyways. So, Wednesday, is it overrated? No, no, no it's, it's not. It's great. Absolutely, I have, not, I have not seen it. Jenna Ortega, first of all, amazing. 
First okay. of all, the dance she does at the Raven dance, iconic. She choreographed it herself. If you think it's weird, I perfect. I don't even know what it is. So. Like, you'll watch and find out. I should. Um, it's called Christmas Crush. That one. Anyways, <laughs> back to back to Wednesday. She did a fantastic job of making of making Wednesday a Gen Z character. Yes. While still keeping the Wednesday persona. Okay. She she's negative, you know. And actually, you know what's so funny? People were complaining so about it's set how- in modern day. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. It's actually quite funny because a lot of people were complaining about how she's very morbid and all because they don't know Adam's family. Mm -hmm. But actually, the show made her a lot less morbid than the character normally is. Because the character normally, if you know who Wednesday Adam is, if you know what Adam's family is in general, Wednesday is like, I love murder. Like, constantly love murder. That's who she is as a character. And But in the show, she still does, and she still finds it intriguing, but it's not to the extent of what she usually is. So those who don't really know Adam's family were like, she's very morbid. I don't really like this. And I'm like, she's 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 mild for the character. <laughs> no, no, she is. And But it's so, such a good take on her and as Wednesday, because it's like you can tell, like, she's still very, like, stone cold. Mm-hmm. But you can tell when, like, she feels certain things, and she still doesn't move her face mm-hmm. like that. Like, in, like, a way of showing expression. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank oh, you. A woman oh, sues Kraft Heinz for five million dollars fine really? don't read birdo fan fiction go so ahead a woman is suing the Kraft heinz company for five million dollars claiming they misled the public about the time it takes to prepare its velveta microwavable mac and cheese you're cups. suing for five million dollars for this the court record she can have all the mac and cheese she wants that a west palm beach based law firm filed the lawsuit on behalf of amanda ramirez in the u.s dis- district court of the Southern District of Florida on November 18th. Ramirez is listed as the main plaintiff for the class action suit, which Kraft Heinz violated federal law by saying Velveeta shells and cheese cups takes three and a half minutes to prepare. The box says it is ready in three and a half minutes, which is the amount of time the product takes to cook in the microwave. However, the suit says it takes more time to complete the other required steps. The instructions are said, quote, as followed. First, consumers must remove lid and cheese sauce pouch. Next, they must add water to fill the lime cup. Stir. Third, microwave uncovered on high for three to three and a half minutes. Do not drain. Finally, they should stir in the contents of the mac and cheese pouch. Defendant then... Defendant then notes that cheese sauce will thicken upon standing. No! <laughs> Not the standing. Not the sauce. Oh my God. Not the sauce. The shells and cheese real bad. Real bad. What are shells and cheese? Oh my God. We you know what shells and cheese are? Velveeta it's just shells mac and, and cheese, cheese that are like shell shaped. They're fantastic. Never had them before. 10 out of 10. Imagine never had Velveeta. Well, I haven't either. Bye. Farewell. It's okay. It's good. For my knowledge. Um, anyways. Jody? Why did this woman think that it was just like... Cheese sauce will thicken upon standing. I have so many That's thoughts. That's my greatest fear. I don't know how to... Well, watch out for that. ...announce them. You know what? Why is this something you're so bothered by? It takes an extra like 30 seconds of preparation. To be fair, I once made microwavable mac and cheese and I made it wrong. It happens. So you know what? I understand. It happens. But, that's five... not, but that's not what she's saying. People she's make saying things wrong. Longer than three and a half minutes. Yeah, no, duh. I can't. It takes it's three and a half minutes to microwave. It says it on thing. Microwave for three and a half minutes. You know what I think? What? She wants money. Yes. Yeah. It's Florida. What do you expect? I would never give her free mac and cheese. Ever. No. I'd be like, that stinks for you. Goodbye. <laughs> they got to like outlaw her name in every restaurant. Yeah, I Mac would. and cheese. I yes. Would. Yeah. No What's her name? Amanda Amanda Ramirez? Microwavable mac and cheese. Listen here, Amanda. You're pathetic. Listen here, Amanda. You can do better. T. You can do better. I'm sorry, Amanda. You're pathetic. And that's where I stand on that. I will die on that hill that she is pathetic. Egg all over her face. You no, know, it's kind of Cheesy. funny because if you shape the macaroni the right way, it's kind of in the shape of a hill. Cheese all over her face. Cheese. Cheese. You're done. Cheese all over her face. Cheese. <laughs> would egg and macaroni and cheese be bad yeah i feel like people have done that I would, i'm sure so i would not appreciate it okay i feel like people i don't know why i feel like kenneth you would do this oh no you would put ketchup with your mac and cheese no no oh. no 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 no, no that's no. evil i put ketchup with my dino nuggies to eat with my mac and cheese what, what, I, what I what i used to do when i would make craft mac and cheese 
is I would take the powder and I wouldn't mix it all the way. So it had all like the powder clumps and it tastes extra cheesy. That's gross. But mm. tasted much better. No. Can I sue you for $5 million? Because I think, that just caused me so mm, much trauma. If you band gonna, together. It looked absolutely disgusting, but it tasted great. I have absolutely no interest in eating mac and cheese in I a microwave. Eat the whole box. Cup. It was great. I've, I've never done that. that. No. Right. I've done that a lot. I, Living in a dorm room will do it. I have. I just, it's I lived off of mac me. and cheese as a kid. I will eat mac and cheese, but if it's like in a microwavable cup, I can't stand it. Oh, micro? Yeah, no, no, no. no. If it's if it's made on the stove, like that's fine. Yeah, I I just I've never had microwave. Okay, so there's this one type of microwavable mac and cheese, and it's you put it into your own bowl and then you put it in the microwave. But you do it. It's like a it's like a craft type. type. That might be you put it in and it's like a microwavable mac and cheese, but it's in like your own bowl. It's not in the cup, and you put it together almost like you you would do it on the stove, but it's not. Yeah. Macro- and something... it actually is pretty decent yeah. if you make it right. There's something about just a plastic cup. No, I'm like, I get it. Ugh. It's macro- like foamish plastic. Macro- Call me. You're yeah. done. Macaroni no, no. in a pot. No, you're done. You're done. Macaroni turn off. in a pot. No, <laughs> you're done. Uh, I can turn. No, <laughs> anyway, she's canceled. That will wrap it up. that will wrap it up for today's morning buzz. I'm so Thank sorry you for saying macaroni in a pot here on on where you, you can say it's, it. no, it's yours. Okay, ninety point three WMSC Upper Montclair.